Good afternoon and thanks for having us in. A former lead school bus driver is headed to federal prison for child pornography. A judge has sentenced 73 year old William Stone to five years behind bars, followed by 10 years of supervised release. In 2020 and 2021, Stone admits downloading child pornography and superimposing naked pictures of himself into the images so it looked like he was the one sexually abusing children. Authorities say he would also add clothed photos of local children. A new Underwood sex offender is back behind bars this midday, accused of committing the same crime that put him on the sex offender registry in the first place. 47-year-old Kent Joy faces federal child pornography charges. The charging document says the alleged crimes began in 2018. Joy has been registered as a sex offender since 2005. That's when a military court convicted him of child pornography. A Watertown man is in the Coddington County Jail this midday facing dozens of sex charges. Robert Hagen is accused of rape, sexual exploitation of a minor, and having sexual contact with a child. The alleged crimes began last summer and continued into this year. He's pleaded not guilty and is scheduled to be back in court on May 17th. Turning now to weather, we check in with meteorologist Scott Munn, who has some pleasant temperatures out there and Pierre's looking to maybe be in the 70s, Scott. Yeah, we're looking at a couple of areas to hit the lower 70s, Pierre being one forecast high around 72 today. We've had the cloud cover stick around in eastern, southeastern Kettle Land throughout much of the morning, starting to see that decrease in cloud cover. I think for the rest of the afternoon, Sioux Falls will come in with mostly sunny skies. But we do have the thick cloud covers just to the north and to the northeast of Sioux Falls. And along with it, we have a couple of rain showers showers in and around Watertown. They are moving to the east and slightly to the southeast for the early part of the afternoon. And there's our Watertown live cam temperature at 44 degrees. I think the clouds will move through. We'll start to bring in some sunshine. Temperatures able to hit the 60s today in and around Watertown. And then we'll have to watch for redeveloping showers, maybe some thunderstorms. You see those roll across the area later this afternoon and evening with a weak front that's trying to move to the east. I don't think it will make it all the way through Kettleland as we'll have south winds uh, last through the overnight hours and into tomorrow for southeastern South Dakota, Iowa, and Minnesota. That will help us warm tomorrow. Temperatures right now are in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. We have 61 in Pierce, 66 in Phillip, 64 in Rapid City. Currently 55 with sunshine in Sioux Falls. We'll see our number warm to 67 for a high, then eventually fall to the middle 40s for overnight lows as south winds uh, will stay in southeastern Kettleland. 60 degree weather today. We will watch for developing showers and thunderstorms as we go through the late afternoon hours into this evening and tonight in northeastern Kettleland. And our forecast into central South Dakota. As Dan mentioned, temperatures in the lower 70s in Pier. Mostly sunny skies becoming partly cloudy. And a forecast across western South Dakota. Looks like we'll have temperatures in the middle 60s for today, eventually falling to the middle 40s for the overnight. And we'll go with increasing chances for showers and thunder showers tomorrow. Those details are coming up with Futurecast in just a couple of minutes. Thank you, Scott. A new grant is enabling the city of Chamberlain to add a new airport terminal. The $885,000 grant was given by the Federal Aviation Administration. According to a news release, Chamberlain is one of 85 airports across the country to receive this grant. With a completion date set for fall of 2023, the new terminal will meet ADA standards, be energy efficient, and will increase access for medical flights. Norfolk Southern said it expects February's fiery Ohio derailment to cost it $387 million, but that total will likely increase over time. That derailment and several others since then have prompted a nationwide focus on railroad safety. That cost estimate includes the $30.9 million the railroad has pledged to help the community recover, but it doesn't reflect how much Norfolk Southern will put into funds to cover any long-term health problems and compensate residents. The Pentagon has confirmed a senior ISIS leader responsible for a deadly attack on Americans and Afghans during the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan has been killed. Nicole Skanga has this story from Washington. A suicide bomber killed 13 American service members in 2021 at Afghanistan's main airport in Kabul during the final U.S. withdrawal. 
Now, almost two years later, the U.S. Defense Department confirms the ISIS leader who planned the attack is dead, killed in a firefight with the Taliban earlier this month. It's one less terrorist that we have to worry about. Darren Hoover is the father of Staff Sergeant Taylor Hoover, who died from the blast. To me, it won't be justice ever. The Taliban apparently did not realize who they'd killed, but U.S. intelligence found out. Still, agents have not released a name. 45 other servicemen and women were wounded and at least 170 Afghan civilians killed in the August 2021 attack. I opened my eyes to Marines dead or unconscious lying around me. Former Marine Tyler Vargas Andrews was hit by more than 100 ball bearings. He believes more could have been done to prevent the attack. The 11 Marines, one sailor <clears throat> and one soldier that were murdered that day have not been answered for. He remains frustrated that no government officials have been held to account for the chaotic withdrawal. Nicole Skanga, CBS News, Washington. President Joe Biden, First Lady Jill Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris all joined to welcome President Yoon suk Yeol and First Lady Kim kyung hee to the White House. President Yoon is in the U.S. as part of an official state visit from South Korea. The two leaders are expected to have several meetings to discuss the war in Ukraine, tension with China, and how the United States and South Korea can work together on technology, trade, and space exploration.